the Chippewa Indians were in, uh, in the center of what, what's now the United States. There were lots of buffaloes and, and grass, and the, the stand, they were standing there and looking at the sky, and they saw the clouds that were coming from the Rocky Mountains. The, 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 the clouds would come from the Pacific Ocean, and uh, then uh, look uh, at the plane, uh, hesitate, and go down slowly, 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 until they reach the Atlantic Ocean. So the Indians were there, they were looking at that, and uh, after a moment, they composed that poem. Uh, then, then usually, they appreciate the poem. I don't know what it means. I have an, another, another example of, uh, of that kind. It's something that happened to me. Uh, I've written uh, poems uh, that were, um, when I was younger, they were for my daughter and my nephews and nieces, and uh, after a, a while, they were for my grandchildren. You see. And usually about animals, because uh, children love animals. And there's a... Uh, and once I was invited to, buy, I received a letter from uh, a young gentleman of seven years old, seven years old, uh, who told me, uh, uh, hello, Jacques Rebeau. Um, our, our school mistress uh, told us that uh, we, we, have, we have studied a few of your poems at school, and uh, our school mistress uh, uh, told us uh, that you were alive. We were, <laughs> we were surprised because the po poets lived at the, uh, at, the, at the time of Victor Hugo. So, uh, if you are alive, <laughs> I, <laughs> you come, <laughs> you, he wanted to see, you come to my school, and the, the, our mistress uh, is, uh, says it's okay, and as he was um, not sure about the, the capabilities of poets. He said, you take that metro, you come there, <laughs> here is the address, there is a big green, green door, you, <laughs> there is a bell, and, and you go up, it's on the second floor. So I come there, and I begin to discuss with the, the children, the, and it's very tiring, I don't know how, how they, they can manage, because you have to answer 40, in 40 seconds, and after that, uh, it's another question. And, and uh, they wanted to, to, uh, me to read one of those poems called The Pigeons. Uh, I'll say the, the beginning in French because it's n'est pas convenable. Les pigeons qui chient sur Paris. And uh, so I recited the poem, and uh, I, I said, what, what do you want? Uh, because there are four-letter words in the poem, and the and the and the, uh, the maîtress uh, said, uh, "It's okay, but not again, <laughs> not again." And then I recited a, a poem called "La Vache," the cow. A cow is an animal. That has approximately four legs that go down to the earth. That's a good description of a cow. But they didn't agree with me. So we discussed a moment, and this, and I finally, it appeared that what was not good was the word approximately. They said, a cow has four legs. And I said, but I don't know exactly. I have not counted all the legs of all the cows. Maybe some of them have three legs, some of them have five legs, and, and the cows are big animals. I don't want to go around them. It's dangerous. So we discussed a moment, but they were not convinced. At the end, when they saw that they could not make me agree that I had made a mistake, they asked 
Mademoiselle Sol, their mistress, a cow. How many legs has a cow? Four, said Mrs. Sol. You see. <laughs> well, we are getting near the end. Um, I have to, to, to introduce the next, uh, the next, best, the, the, no, the one before last poem, uh, because uh, in, in 1941, in 1941, you see, France was occupied by the Nazis. But the United States were not at war with Hitler. So, my grandmother had two daughters and her younger daughter had taken with her husband called Walter Judah, had taken the last, um, the last paquebot, uh, the, last, the last steam liner to, to New York because we, we said uh, it probably it would be better for you to go. So my grandmother decided to go and meet her daughter and her son-in-law. So what did she do? Well, she crossed Spain. She went to Portugal. She took a cargo, uh, a boat, a Portuguese boat. She went there. And uh, then uh, she stayed there uh, a few months. Uh, to pers she gave conferences uh, uh, to the French, uh, uh, the French community in New York and, uh, and uh, Boston, because my, my uncle, uh, chemist, was living in, in Harvard, was teaching at Harvard, and uh, to, to persuade them that Pétain was no good, because they were all, all of them were for Pétain at that time, all the French. So she came back, she came back and visited, visited uh, to, in, my, in our, in our house in the south of France, in Carcassonne, and she described her breakfast, breakfast with orange juice. And it was a very long description. She took a glass and she said, you take the orange, you get it, and you press. And we were there, because at that time we had not very much to eat. And we had, had, I, I was the elder and I had seen oranges before the war, but my, young, my sister and, my, and, and, and younger brother, no, they didn't know. So, after that description, we decided that we would go to America after the end of the war. We would not go by plane, because planes were things very dangerous that put bombs on your head. We would go by a steam liner and drink orange juice. Of course. The steam liner. The steam liner climbed to the fifth floor and cried, toot, toot, toot. The moon did not reply. The steam liner climbed to the sixth floor and cried, toot, toot, toot. The moon did not reply. The steam liner climbed to the ninth floor and cried, toot, 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 and the moon did not reply. Steam liners do not sail from floor to floor. Steam liners sail the seas and the oceans. They go on seas and they cry, toot, 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 and the moon does not reply. Now, we'll finish with uh, a, a very special kind of poem because uh, uh, there's a problem for poets because it's very uh, difficult to publish poetry. You don't earn money. Uh, publishers are not happy. And it's even worse to have po poetry translated in other languages. It, it's a lot of money. So. so I decided to write poems that would be very, very easy to translate. 